Good morning guys, it's Pastor Andy. Today is December the 31st. Here we are, the last day of the year. Uh, next, tomorrow starts January 1st, 2020, which means we're not just entering into a new year, uh, but we're entering into a new decade and we're closing out a year and a decade today. So I hope that you finish the year strong, that you are in God's Word, that you are praying, talking to the Lord, having that conversation open with Him. So many people talk about their daily devotions and their walk with the Lord, and that should look like something where you're spending time in God's Word, where He is speaking to you every day, and where you're spending time in prayer, speaking to Him, not necessarily coming to Him with your uh, wish list and treating God like a genie in a bottle or, or something like that, but where we are conversing with God about everything. We're bringing God into every area of our life. That's what prayer is, bringing God into every area of my life, not just a certain few, but bringing God into everything. That's what Paul said when he said, pray without ceasing. That means not that you're walking around with your head down praying all day or that you're, you know, spending hours and hours and hours and all day in prayer. It means that you're in an attitude of prayer all day where you bring God into every area of your life. There's nothing that's off limits to him. So I hope that you have that as a priority for next year, starting off January 1 tomorrow, uh, to do that with the Lord, to have that time with Him every day. If I can get you to ask yourself some questions and get you to look into God's Word for some answers, that's a win for me. Because I am driving you, I am getting you to open God's Word and spend time in prayer with Him. And that's what the goal is for these daily devotions. And as I was reading today's proverb of the day, it's one of the more famous Proverbs that we talk about, especially around Mother's Day, because it's uh, Proverbs 31. And we've all heard about the Proverbs 31 woman and all those things. And it talks at the beginning of the chapter, um, the sayings of Lemuel, where his, uh, he, he's being told about alcohol and how a king is supposed to protect people who are underneath him. And then you come to verse 10 and it says, Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Men, if you have a wife that is capable, who you can trust, who enriches your life, who brings you good, you got a virtuous woman. And you ought to thank God for that every day that he has brought her into your life. There's, I know I said it Sunday morning that marriage can either be heaven on earth or it can be hell on earth if you're married to someone who is not like this. Unfortunately, there's a lot of men who are married to a wife who does a lot of talking. She doesn't, um, she's not virtuous. She's not capable. She doesn't enrich her husband's life. She brings harm to him, brings harm to his name because of the things that she says and the way she acts and what she does. Now, please don't take this as being a male chauvinist. That is not what I am by any stretch of the imagination. I'm complementarian in doctrine. I believe that uh, the husband and the wife roles complement each other. The man and the woman's roles complement each other. That God made each one of us equal. Um, but there are some responsibilities he gives to a man and some responsibilities that he gives to a woman. One of those is not better than the other. One of those is not greater than the other. They're just different. And God chose to do things that way. And that's completely up to him because he's God and I'm not. So I am not putting down the role of any woman anywhere. I mean, outside of pastoring, there's not many roles in the Bible that uh, it says that a woman cannot hold. So I think we, our church is very balanced and that we have ladies who serve in all kinds of ministries. And we have men who serve in all kinds of ministries. I love that about our church. We're very active involvement from our congregation. But men, the whole point of this this morning, thank God for your wife. Because without her, you'd be a mess, <laughs> if we're honest. I know I would be. I know me personally today, I'm thanking God for the wife that he brought into my life. How she enriches me, how she helps me, how she partners together with me, and how we are, we have a great marriage. I love my wife, and I thank God for her. Men, I hope you feel that way, and I hope you tell your wife today how much she means to you and how she enriches your life. God bless you. 
I'll see you next year.